Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Friends and Enemies. It's a book that I just wrote and I really want to make sure that I get a chance to talk to you a little bit about what's going on without telling you specifically what's in the book because it's something that I want you to be able to encounter for yourself. However, um, as I started thinking about some of the things that are going on in the real world with our kids and with our parents and the impact that it's having on society, I want to make sure that people get a real, true understanding of what's taking place. First, friends. Let's talk about friends, and most of you remember what it was like if you're older to have when you had, high, when you had friends in high school and what that meant and what that was about. But today, it's a little bit different. But I'm still going to focus on the concept of friends. And if you look the word up in the dictionary, I can assure you that the dictionary doesn't know the meaning of the word friends. Because when I think about friends, I think about somebody who you can count on, somebody who you can depend on. A friend is not somebody that you cheat or not somebody that's going to cheat you. A friend is somebody who you can tell your deepest thoughts to, somebody who you can trust, somebody who, when times are difficult, that you can believe in and rely on. So friends, it has a, a really big and a really huge meaning to a lot of people. However, there are a lot of people out there that are what I call so-called friends. And these are people who will get close to you because of something that you have or get close to you because of something that they want from you. These are people who will take something that you have and take it out and exploit you. They will lie on you. They will lie to you. They will cheat on you. They will abuse you. These are so-called friends. So we really have to be careful about how we perceive our friends and who we accept into our lives as our friends. And when I begin to think about the most difficult of friends, I can't help but think about gang members. And oh yes, we do have gang members in our schools today. They're in our middle schools and they're in our high schools. So, when I start thinking about that lower level of what a gang member is, or when I start thinking about the lower level of gangs, there are people out there who have friends and associates who are in gangs. And we look at these people and we say, well, I'm not going to be a gang member, but this is my friend. So if you're going to call a gang member your friend, you have to understand that now you are associating yourself with somebody who's going to put your life in danger. See, all you have to do is be at the wrong place at the wrong time with that friend, and you can end up being stretched out. Now, when I think about the next level of gang members, I think about those people who, they're more than just an associate of a gang member. You're on the fence. You don't know if you're going to join the gang or if you're not going to join the gang. But whatever we're going to do, we're going to make sure that we hang out with the gang members. We're going to go party with the gang members. We're going to go spend the night with gang members. We're going to go socialize with them. So when you start to do that, you're putting yourself at risk, at very serious risk of getting your life taken from you. Now, for you all who decide that I'm going to be a gang member, you're 16 years old, you are a full-fledged gang member, and you can go to jail at any point in time simply because you are 16 years old. Here's the rub. When you turn 16 and you get popped for anything that's gang-related, your name goes into a gang database. And it goes all over the country. So now, you are a full-fledged gang member. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't think that I don't understand what happens and what causes us sometimes to become gang members. Sometimes we may not have a father in the house. Sometimes we may not have a mother in the house. Sometimes our power may be cut off. We may not have food on the table. There might be times when we're actually homeless. These are some of the things that might contribute to people leaving what's really supposed to be their family and, great, and gravitating to a makeshift family. So they go to these people who they think they can trust, who they think they can depend on, 
who they think are really truly their friends and who they can live with. And then the rules begin to change. So I want you to understand what that means and why people begin to gravitate towards gangs. But here's the thing. Once you become a full-fledged gang member, you've made that decision that you can't get back, there's a good and real possibility that your life may not live, that your life may not be extended to very long. Because once the police pull you over and they know you're a gang member, yes, you're going to be harassed. Yes, you're going to be searched. And yes, there's a good possibility that you're going to be going to jail pretty much every time you get pulled over. And believe me, if you don't know and if you're not paying attention to what's going on across the country today, there's a real good chance that just because you are a gang member that you will be stressed out. All you got to do is be disrespectful at the wrong time, at the wrong place, with the wrong person. Now, if you don't want to believe that, just pay attention to what's going on around you. Now, let's mention the word respect. Here's the difference between something else that I want to talk to you about. The difference between good parenting and bad parenting. Because believe it or not, it does make a real difference in our lives. See, bad parents oftentimes say to their kids, you're just like your father, or you're just like your mother. And the words that follow, that mess that you're pouring into your child, is going to turn them into just that, a hot mess. So believe me, those things that you say to your child, they hear it, they feel it, they pay attention to it, and it becomes part of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Or, you can be that person who nurtures their child. You can be that person who makes sure that their child is respectful, that you're teaching them the way to go. See, the thing about it is, please remember, you can't be your child's friend. Because if you're your child's friend, who are you when it's time for discipline? Who are you when it's time for consequences? See, a friend can't punish another friend. But if you are a good parent, a strong parent, you make sure that your child has morals, values, and education is very important. Because here's something that I'm going to tell you. If your child can't read by third grade and you don't know this, that is not the school's fault. That's the parent's fault. Because why weren't you reading to your child and having your child read to you when that child was in first grade and second grade? If you don't know that by third grade, it's not the school's fault. That's that parent's fault. Now, with that being said, I think that I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to get into too much um, and give you any, any ideas or any further information about what may be in the book. But I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for your attention. And I definitely want to thank you for your support.